we have some problems in the electrical trade and it's some the stuff that a lot of people don't really want to talk about but a lot of people really know about it <laughs> it's kind of like that time that you saw your grandma naked and she saw that you saw her naked and then you locked eyes that one time and then nobody really ever says anything about it and then like years and years down the road you like still just kind of look at your grandma weird and your grandma looks at you weird that not happen to anybody else oh My name is Dustin Stelzer. I am an electrician. Um, I am not a uh, long time super electrician that's been doing this for 30 years, um, like some of the guys that I look up to, but I have been an electrician for 14 years and I've seen a lot of things over the course of being in this trade. And one of the biggest problems that I noticed very early on was that we have a problem with new people coming into the trades not enough of them more specifically. There's just not enough people interested in becoming an electrician and being plumbers, being framers, all that kind of stuff. Um, the more that our society kind of engages on screens, and I'm not gonna sit here and do the whole screen time, screens are bad, get your kids off screen. That's not where I'm going with this. But what I'm saying is that we have kind of a new generation that's coming up that are getting paid and making a lot of money off, like being able to play video games and getting paid for it, or making YouTube videos, or you know, like just being engaged in a screen, programming, making games, making apps, things like that. We're such a heavily computerized screen time kind of society that we just don't really have very many electricians and plumbers and, and kids that are aspiring to do these hands-on kind of trades, unless, you know, they're dad does it or something like that. So this is problem number one. It's called the skills gap problem. There is a gap in the skilled trades. Right now, the average age of an electrician is anywhere from like 46 to 51, depending on what website or publication you read the statistics at, but that's still old for a career that is primarily driven by the youth. Um, you know, a lot of electricians that do a lot of the like really grunt, heavy duty kind of work are apprentices. Um, a lot of them are journeymen or, or you know, residential wiremen and stuff too, but the, the more that you go up in the trades, the less arduous you yourself have to go through work because you have other hands that you are in charge of directing them to do this work. So for the average age of an electrician to be kind of, you know, within 15 to 20 years of retiring, means that the average is kind of skewed in the wrong direction. Now, what this means is that down the line, in a few years, we're gonna have all of these people that are considered the average age for electricians. These are the guys that are making code. These are the ones that are running, you know, trade organizations, um, the ones running companies and, and being master electricians for companies that are doing a lot of the training and, and are offering articles and they're the ones that are kind of holding this industry together. A lot of them are gonna start retiring and there's gonna be people like me that are kind of in the middle. You know, we are in our 30s, 30 to 40 years old in that ballpark that have been an electrician for a decade and a half, two decades, whatever. And we're going to continue on that tradition because that's where we came up. We had probably fathers that had their own company and we're kind of just going in that same uh, step or we just see the value in our generation of doing things with your hands. A lot of us used to like work on cars and turbocharge cars and stuff like that. And so it was just kind of seen as a cool thing to do with all of our buddies to get around something with your hands and start doing things. And a lot of our friends would work with their hands. And so it was just seen as a cool thing to do, I guess, as a, as a worthwhile way to make money. But a lot of the kids that are coming up now don't see that. Um, and our society is running more and more on these things, on plumbing, on air conditioning and heating, on electricity. We need these things to stay operable. 
So as the future goes on and there's less and less people, less infrastructure to take care of all of these problems, the prices are gonna probably get hiked up for those of us that are in business or there's going to have to be new materials and things that allow consumers to do their own electrical work. If there's a scarcity of people, then the, either the market is gonna change, materials are gonna change, and something is gonna happen to allow the availability of other people to do that job. Um, you know, that could be everything going to low voltage, everything's like 12 volt, 24 volt, and we have a new whole way of smart homes and everything working that are not on traditional, um, you know, utility power, which is probably very likely. Um, or we just fix the problem and we do something to address this and we get more people into the trades. So that is what I hope ultimately happens because electricity is not just a small thing where we can kind of like solve a couple of problems by like changing, uh, you know, what voltage some lights are and like having Holly Homemaker do all of her own electrical. I think that's li that's less likely than us just making sure that we are training correctly and we're getting opportunities available to people to see what it's like to be an electrician, to be like making YouTube videos out in the field and seeing people do the work and be like, oh wow, I really think that that would be a cool job. So this is one massive problem with the trade. My question for you is how do you, as an electrician, or even if you're not an electrician, how do you suppose that we fix this problem? I have the idea, and I, or I had the idea many years ago that, hey, why don't we just start making videos? Why don't we start throwing stuff out about like, what is voltage, what is an amperage, what, how, what does an electrician do? And just start showing people videos of this stuff and it might get more people excited. And I think over the last five years that I've been doing this, I've gotten a whole bunch of people into being an electrician and a lot of them love it. But that's only one part of the equation. That's only one audience of people that are watching YouTube videos. So what else do you think that we can do to get more people into the electrical trade? Uh, another idea that I have is I think that we need to be going into schools. I think there's a huge problem with our educational system in that we teach kids to essentially only be scientists or mathematics or you know anything engineering something in stem we don't we teach to the topic really in public schools but we don't teach to the career or the interest of the student really and i think that there's there's a lot of like building and constructing and deconstructing things that people love doing and they have no idea they love doing it because it's never been put in front of them as an option. You know, like most kids start out with blocks and Legos and start playing with things. That as a human being, that's how we start interacting with our reality around us. And then we start seeing people and we kind of model the behavior of other people. So a lot of our influence on what we're gonna do for our future in a career is, I'm gonna just gonna do what my parents did or I'm gonna do what my friend's dad does that I respect or whatever, you know? Like we, we, uh, we kind of just mirror what's around us. But I think that it is up to our school systems to develop some sort of trade programs. Some of them have them, some of them don't. A lot more used to have them, like automotive and things like that. But I think just allowing kids, even at a young age, I'm not talking high school, I'm saying at a young age, like having part of school be taking things together and putting things back, taking things apart and putting things together. And if we keep kind of nourishing that thing in people, there's gonna be a lot more people that are interested in construction. The other problem with construction is that it has this bad media like stigma to it. Everybody thinks of construction workers as all these dirty guys that are always like whistling at women. And like, we just see this kind of like family guy version of what a construction worker is. And that's not even what, I've never once been on a job site ever that, and I've been on thousands of job sites. I've never been on a job site where somebody cat calls a girl or whistles at a girl. Now, I am not saying that it has never happened or that it doesn't still happen. I am just saying that I have never seen it myself. I will not lie, we work with our hands, we get filthy, we sweat, we cuss, we bleed, we cut ourselves, we fucking break things, we put things together, but that's part of the job. That's just a part of it. 
There's also the finesse and the care and the aesthetic of making something look beautiful and perfect. There's the engineering side. There's the taking something that is a plan and seeing nothing and putting all of your blood, sweat, and tears into making a something up here. And then at the end of the day, it's like, holy shit, I just built that building. <laughs> you know, like I changed matter on the planet. I didn't just sit at a desk and like throw a bunch of numbers and zeros and ones into a database and then go home. You know, like I actually did, I constructed, I built, I destroyed, I did something. So that's of huge importance to a lot of people and they just don't realize it until they get into it. And that's why most of the people that I've gotten into the electrical trade, they love being an electrician. Like they really, they just fall in love with it and they're like, this is so cool. I didn't have any idea. You know, and part of it's because it's like, this is kind of an ethereal thing. We can't see electricity or hear it or smell it or anything. It's very theoretical, um, which is kind of the cool nature of it as well. It's like you're playing with a ghost almost, um, but how motors work and how like energy moves from one thing and transforms to another. A lot of people like like hanging ceiling fans and like decorative lighting, like, you know, $50,000 chandeliers and stuff like that. There's just so much to offer so many people. And we don't even at a school level we don't even offer this as a possibility. And I just think that's wrong. Um, I think if we took a little bit more time, I would let my kid go to school for an extra hour every day. I'm sure they would hate that. <laughs> but I would be okay with my, cool, my kid going to school longer to make sure that every day he's being put into something where he has to close books, shut computers down, like be in a group of people that all have to build something and they have to take nothing and make something out of it and they all have to work with their hands they all have to work as a team but also every once in a while they work individual i just think that that's missing from from how we work and even if you're on the side of like being a business owner and you see the advantage of young kids uh learning a certain thing so that they can come and be an employee at your workforce rather than being like a self you know thinking individual that's not controlled by the man even if you like are somebody that is viewing the education system as like it's it's a good thing that we don't teach all these people to be smart it's still in your benefit to allow kids the opportunity to construct things to build things and do what i'm saying because it's going to make them a more well-rounded team player and understand how to construct and build things i think it'll solve a problem with people just generally being able to solve problems in their lives as well. Because as I've become an electrician and kind of gone on through my life, being able to use tools and be very confident with all of the tools that you could possibly imagine, it allows me to do so many other things. It allows me to think in a different way, to approach problems in a different way, to provide for myself and kind of like be self-reliant. Um, so there's just so much to it. And I think that the average person would would love to do things like what we do out in the field every day. I think the average person doing anything in the trades, building, cutting, sawing, you know, like taking something that doesn't exist and making a plan, formulating it, getting everything together and making it exist. I just think that's massive. So anyways, off my tirade, that is the video for today. Please leave your suggestions below. What can I as electrician you or we as the electrician you crew, uh, what can we do to try to get more people in the trades? If any of you know somebody that's like hooked up to Ted, you know, doing a Ted talk about this shit, like fuck, I'll do whatever. I care about this trade. I want more people to be uh, to be involved, to get in it. It changes lives um, and in the construction field in general. So uh, give me some suggestions below. If you want to work with me to solve this problem, get at me, Dustin at electricianu.com. Let's get some more people in here. Um, start fixing the problem with this trade. Give me your money. Give me your money. Okay, so uh, thank you for those that have given me their money. <laughs> My 480 <laughs> volt members. Oh, thanks. I just lost all of you. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for your support. No, seriously, like, y'all are my homies. You're the ones that really, like, um, 
try to help out. I've noticed a pattern, a lot of the four evil members are like people that have been around for a really long time. Um, so they really love to support the channel. I appreciate everything. Thank you so much, you guys, uh, for putting up, putting up whatever the fuck this guy is. Um, if you would like to join the 480 Volt members and have your name up on the screen, uh, go to the join button under my YouTube banner, click subscribe, click like, click the notification bell thing, uh, lets you know every time I have a new episode, join the U crew. Now, if you leave comments, uh, this Friday I'm going to go over um, what everybody has to say and, and see if we can try to put some kind of plan roughly together. Um, just to see if we can move the ball a little bit. Um, I want to try to get a group, a community of people around that are working on these problems rather than it just being a couple of us that have these conversations in between ourselves. Um, but I want to try to help the entire society, the entire trade to kind of usher in a, a just a thought experiment on how do we fix these problems and what are the actual problems and what are bullshit and people just complaining. You know, there's a lot of that too. So uh, anyways, I love you crazy people. Thank you so much for your support and I will see you in the next one. Best music and video.